Hey friends, welcome back to Grand Adventure. I'm your host, Mark Guido, and in this episode, we're gonna explore the amazing Beartooth Mountains, including the town of Red Lodge, a drive across the Beartooth Highway to Cook City, Montana, right on the doorstep of Yellowstone National Park, and even do a little paddling, among other things, so stay tuned. This episode of Grand Adventure is sponsored by The Dirt Pro. Find the campsite that's right for you from over 44,000 listings, either on the web or on their number one ranked mobile app. Try all of the pro features free for 90 days by using the promo code GRANDADVENTURE90. This western heat wave is persisting, so we are still on hookups in the Bridgertown Park, just where we were in last week's episode. So I'm not gonna spend an enormous amount of time showing you the campsite here because we just showed this to you last week. And if you haven't yet seen that episode, I'll put a link right here on the screen so you can go back and check it out. But last week, I explained to you that we are right at the junction where the mountains meet the plains. And last week, we brought you eastward out the plains to show you Little Bighorn Battlefield National Monument. This week, we are going to head in the other direction. We're gonna head westbound and southwest into the Beartooth Mountains. We're going to show you the Beartooth Highway, which is a spectacular roadway that rises to over 10,900 feet on its route from Red Lodge, Montana to Cook City, Montana, in the process of which diving into Wyoming a little bit and ending right at the northeast gate of Yellowstone National Park. We're also gonna bring you paddling on East Rosebud Lake. We're gonna show you the town of Red Lodge and a whole lot more. Just a few miles south of Bridger on the edge of the Beartooth Mountains, the Robertson Draw Fire has been burning for nearly three weeks, scorching nearly 30,000 acres since it was allegedly ignited by a careless dirt biker riding illegally in a closed area. In its early stages, it advanced rapidly to the north, initially threatening the towns of Bear Creek and Red Lodge, before a reversal of wind direction thankfully forced the flames back into the mountains. It's now 65% contained. Red Lodge Mountain Ski Area looms high above the charming resort town of Red Lodge in southeastern Montana. Visitors and townspeople are lining Broadway for today's July 4th parade, but Red Lodge has a diverse history over its 139 years. Rich coal deposits were found here in 1866, and gold was discovered nearby in 1870. In 1880, treaty between the U.S. government and the Crow Nation allowed the area to be settled starting April 11, 1882. A rail line was constructed in the town, and coal shipments began in June 1889. In 1896, Red Lodge had 20 saloons and riotous and violent living was characteristic of the town. By 1911, the population had increased to 5,000, but when the Great Depression forced many mines to close, townspeople turned to manufacturing illegal bootleg liquor to make ends meet. 
In 1931, work began on the Beartooth Highway, linking Red Lodge to Yellowstone National Park. It was officially opened in 1936. Red Lodge has survived primarily on tourism ever since, with visitors arriving for downhill skiing in winter and mountain biking, hiking, fly fishing, and backpacking in summer. Midway between Red Lodge and our camp in Bridger, the now tiny hamlet of Bear Creek is home to the Smith Mine disaster. On February 27, 1943, an explosion ripped through the Smith Mine No. 3. Of the 77 men working in this coal mine that day, only three got out alive, and one of the rescue workers died soon afterward. 30 of the men were killed instantly by the explosion, and the remainder died either because of injuries they sustained or because of suffocation from the carbon monoxide and methane gas in the mine. The explosion was deep underground and not heard at the mouth of the mine, despite having enough power to knock a 20-ton locomotive off its tracks a quarter mile away. The explosion was attributed to a buildup of methane gas in the mine. The cause of detonation is unknown, but various reports note that men were allowed to smoke in the mine and that fuses for blasting were lit with matches. The Beartooth Highway is the 69-mile section of U.S. Route 212 that stretches from Red Lodge to Cook City, Montana. Designated a National Scenic Byways All-American Road, it traces a series of steep zigzags and switchbacks at its northern end to climb from 5,200 feet near Red Lodge to 10,947 feet atop Beartooth Pass in Wyoming in a distance of only 12 miles. It's been deservedly heralded as one of the most scenic drives in the United States and constitutes the highest elevation highway in both Wyoming and Montana. In August 1872, the pass was crossed by Civil War General Philip Sheridan and 120 men returning from an inspection tour of Yellowstone National Park. Rather than taking the long detour down the Clarks Fork Yellowstone River to return to Billings, Sheridan took the advice of an old hunter named Shuki Greer, who claimed intimate knowledge of the Beartooth Mountains. When the road was opened in 1936, it essentially followed Sheridan's route over the pass. Snowstorms can occur even in the middle of the summer at this altitude. In fact, when we last drove this road almost exactly three years ago today, we encountered a blizzard and the road was closed behind us after we arrived in Cook City. The only snow removal that takes place here occurs in May or June, as the road is prepared for opening for the summer season. Beartooth Basin Ski Area is located right at Beartooth Pass. It's the only ski area in North America that's open only in summer, generally from late May to early July, as the Beartooth Highway is closed in winter. It opened in 1962 and totals 600 acres, served by two Puma lifts. The Wyoming Department of Transportation claims that the portion of the Beartooth Highway that passes through their state does not meet its standards for Wyoming state highways, despite its U.S. highway designation. So this portion of the road is maintained by the National Park Service, despite not being part of Yellowstone National Park or being preserved as its own park unit. The Montana Department of Transportation does maintain its portions at the east and west ends of the highway that pass through Custer and Gallatin National Forests.
With a population of only 75, Cook City sits at the western end of the Beartooth Highway at the northeastern gate into Yellowstone National Park. It's named for Jay Cook, financier of the Northern Pacific Railroad. We're going to stop here for a quick bite to eat. Rather than return the same way we came, we're going to make a loop of it and return to Bridger via Wyoming Highway 296, also known as the Chief Joseph Scenic Highway, because it follows the route taken by Chief Joseph as he led the Nez Perce Indians out of Yellowstone National Park and into Montana in 1877, during their attempt to flee the U.S. Cavalry and escape into Canada. It's a beautiful drive that winds through the Shoshone National Forest and through the Absorka Mountains. Here at Dead Indian Pass, which bypasses the narrow vertical walls where the Clarks Fork Yellowstone River bisects the Absorka Mountains, Chief Joseph led 700 Nez Perce men, women, and children, and 2,000 horses as they were being pursued by several hundred U.S. soldiers. They were looking for a route to the Great Plains, possibly to join and hide with their friends the Crow. However, the U.S. Army had anticipated this, and stationed General Samuel D. Sturgis and 600 cavalry soldiers six miles below near the base of the mountains to intercept the Nez Perce. On September 8, 1877, the Nez Perce reached Dead Indian Pass and, spotting the soldiers below waiting for them, first fainted going south before descending to the north into Clark's Fort Canyon via a narrow, steep-sided slit in the rock walls called Dead Indian Gulch. Sturgis took the bait and led his soldiers away from the Clark's Fort and headed south to the Shoshone River as the Nez Perce passed into the Great Plains unopposed. Sturgis quickly realized his error and turned around, but by now the Nez Perce were 50 miles ahead. It would take the U.S. Army another month to finally corner and defeat the Nez Perce at the Battle of Bear Paw in north central Montana, mere miles from the Canadian border.
Still wanting to taste more of the Beartooth Mountains, we're heading about 20 miles east of Red Lodge to the East Rosebud River drainage. The East Rosebud carries the snowmelt of the Beartooths northward out of the mountains to the Yellowstone River. This forest road heads southwest from the small village of Roscoe for 14 miles before it dead ends at spectacular East Rosebud Lake. The entire lake is surrounded by private property, and signs everywhere proudly remind visitors that it's been that way since 1894. High watermark rules don't apply here. However, the East Rosebud Lake Association has graciously allowed public access to a boat ramp on the lake's outlet at the far northwestern end of their property. And there's an adequate parking lot on Forest Service land immediately adjacent to the launch. We're going to take advantage of this to enjoy a bit of kayaking in this spectacular setting.
Finally, what would Independence Day be without fireworks? We're winding down our July 4th festivities with a wonderful show in Red Lodge. So we hope that you enjoyed exploring the Beartooth Mountains with us. Coming up next week, we will head to a different campsite. So if you're not yet a Grand Adventurer, this is the perfect time to go smash that little red subscribe button down there in the lower right hand corner of your screen and ring that notification bell to be sure that you come along on each and every Grand Adventure each and every Wednesday evening. We would be honored if you shared the channel with your friends, family, and on social media. And it's extremely important to us that if you like this episode, please be sure to give us a big thumbs up down below. And while you're down below, why not leave a comment for us in the comment section? So until next week, please remember, life is nothing but a grand adventure. We'll see you then.